Hey guys, how's it going? Scotty from scottsbasslessons.com. Hope you're well. Uh, and we're here with another new episode of Ask Scott. Um, if you haven't checked this out before, um, what we're doing is just every week I'll take comments from the or questions from the week previous and I'll answer them in every uh, every episode. Um, over at the Academy at Scott's Bass Lessons, we kind of do this on a weekly basis. Uh, I've got guys like Ed Friedland, Todd Johnson, Danny Mo Morris, um, Anthony Wellington. I've probably missed somebody out. That's epic. Um, apologies if I have. I've got these guys. Who are Joe, Hu- Joe Hubbard's doing it now. Um, these guys are doing like weekly live Q and A's, and I think the question and a- f- question and answer format is really really good. Um, for educational purposes because it just gets you know gives people the answers that, it, that they want and uh, we thought we'd just bring a bit of that to the YouTube channel as well but if you haven't checked out the academy over at scottsbasesessons.com make sure you do so because it is epic uh, let's get on with the oh actually before I go we just released a chords course as well um, six hours chords course in the um, academy over at Scots Bass Lessons and for anybody that joined in the in the, the first seven days, I think, of it opening, of, of the course launching, anybody that joined the academy within those days also is going to get an exclusive live training with me where we're all going to jump online and specifically talk about chords, how to use them. We're going to be talking a lot about the course, but I'm going to be, it's going to be completely live Q&A as well. So if you want to be a part of that, make sure you join up. I think today is the last day. There'll be a link below this video that will take you through so you can check out the details. So let's get on with the questions for this episode. Phil asks, any thought about tools for building a fretless technique using either a four or five string instrument? Hey Phil, um, when it comes to fretless, I've never, and I used to play fretless exclusively, as in I didn't have a fretted bass for a long time. I just played fretless. Um, I never changed anything about my technique at all because when you're playing fretted bass, you should be playing directly behind the fret, just you know, just tiny bit behind the fret. You know, the technique doesn't change. So what I'd really recommend is if you're is getting your your technique up to scratch on on a fretted bass and then you know and then if you feel like you want to check out fretless i wouldn't say there's any specific exercises that i ever did on fretless that uh, that helped my intonation or anything like that really um so i'll just say dive in with both feet really and, and just check it out and if you do have any intonation issues at all it's probably a technique problem not a fretless bass problem. It's something that you'll have to sort of like change your technique. Are you shifting correctly and all that kind of thing. So if anybody out there is thinking, oh, I want to, you know, play fretless and I think it's going to be harder or anything like that, just get a fretless. It's really great fun. And if your technique is up to scratch, it, you should just slip right into it. I never I never practiced, practiced for any sort of like techniques on fretless bass at all. I just, you know, went and did it and it was cool. Thanks for the question, man. P.S. Williams asks, could you elaborate on your approach to your plucking hand, mainly showing if there are any differences in your technique from playing live to when you practice? For example, do you prefer using a lighter touch with a loud ramp in a live situation? Interesting question. I actually had to think about this. I couldn't, um, you know, I was like, oh, I'm not sure. But I am now because I've thought about it. There's no difference with me. Like I really try and keep when I'm practicing at home. I try and keep that, you know, that thing. When I go and do something live, I, I try and keep it very similar because I don't want to. The natural thing to do actually would be to play harder on a gig because your adrenaline gets going. The drummer's giving it some, and you're like, yeah, it's grooving, you know. So if anything, I'm kind of reminding myself, Scott, don't dig in too much, you know, just. You know, keep it chilled, keep it chilled. You know, don't groove, you know, you can groove without going crazy. Um, So, so very much the opposite. I'd I'd, I'd be trying to remind myself just to sort of, you know, not dig in too much, especially if I'm enjoying myself. It depends on what sound you're going for. If you're going in for for a sound where you're... You know, I'm 
digging in there. I'm digging in to get that. That sound, that raspy sound. I'm not digging in there because my adrenaline's going or anything like that. Um, so I really try and keep it exactly the same. Practice room, on a gig, I really want my technique to be the same, um, even if I am enjoying it more in my head. So but thanks for the question, man. Really great, really great question. Rashi asks, hey Scott, you seem to always be jolly. Do you ever get upset or annoyed? Hey man, um, great question. Do I get upset or annoyed? Yes, yes. Um, I am jolly. I'm jolly right, Denmark, right? I am jolly. I do get upset and annoyed though. Um, my wife said I've got a terrible temper. She says, you have got a bad temper. But my wife said I'm really good at switching it off. She said, like, the world can be sort of like crumbling around me and I've kind of sort of like got this ability to be like, cool, it's cool, we're all going to be good. But sometimes when I'm at my weakest, I am a little bit grumpy. And I'll tell you what, I'm never really grumpy with people in general, you know. I'm never, like I'm not the road rage guy or anything like that. And I just think there's just bigger fish to fry, right? Um, and I feel like if you feel good and you try and feel good inside, it kind of like, you know, you make the people around you feel better. If you're a good guy to be with, your life is just going to be a lot easier. But just to answer the answer, answer that question specifically, yeah, I get grumpy sometimes. I'll tell you when I get grumpy. I get grumpy. <laughs> this is so crazy. Like when you walk into my house, there's a sideboard, like something, you know, I don't know, like it's got a couple of drawers and things on it right as you walk into my house on the left hand side my wife loves to put stuff on there whatever it is she loves it she just like clutter she clutters that thing up and i like it to be clean that drives me around the bend that's about as grumpy as i get <laughs> but yeah i do get grumpy but thanks for the question man cheers hey scott i was wondering you have your spl academy now but where did you learn to play bass did you go to a conservatoire and if so where yeah, I didn't go to the Scots Bass Lessons Academy. I had, I had to, I had to um, come along and create that. So if you haven't checked it out, guys, make sure you check it out. Um, where did I go? Um, I went to the University of Life. I gigged a lot, really. I got to the age of, I can't remember when I went. I started really late playing bass. I started playing bass when I was about 18, I think. I played guitar before that. I started playing guitar when I was like 13 or something. Um, played bass from 18... You know, I got a gig, a professional gig, when I was um, like 19, maybe not even 19, um, that I really shouldn't have had. I was really, you know, not good enough for that gig at all, but they had no other choice to take me. So I did that gig, and then I did another gig directly after that, and started gigging on the cruise ships. And again, I wasn't good enough for that either, but weirdly, they had no other choice, but they had to take me. So... I'm not going to go into the reasons why. Basically, it was a timing thing. Um, so they had to take me, which was great for me and terrible for them. And so I did a sort of like a zillion terrible gigs and I really learned, learned by doing. And then after that, came back to the UK after doing, you know, some long stints on the cruise ships. Came back to the UK and, and just gigged a ton. And then when I got to... So I was like playing professionally um of all my 20s and then when I got to about 28 or 29 maybe even 30 um I thought it'd be great to have a, a degree so I went and did um I did my degree I did my degree over a year I um t convinced a Salford University over in the UK to uh, to let me do a degree in a year which was hard work but they they said yes and and I did the degree and and it was really great actually I didn't learn much about bass at all because obviously I was gigging professionally then anyway, but I really just wanted the degree. I just thought if I'm going to teach, I better have something that's, you know, that says, you know what, this guy knows what he's doing. So, um, but I learned a lot about programming, um, using Pro Tools. I, I learned a lot about composition. Um, and so, and that wasn't part of my life at all before I went to university. So it was really worth it for that. I, initially, I just thought, oh, it's just a bit of paper that I really want. But when I went to university for that year, it was really great because I learned how to use um, DAWs and sampling software. And I did a lot of orchestral arranging and, and writing for orchestral stuff. It was really great, really great experience. So, but that's not where I went to learn the bass. 
I kind of learned the bass just on the job, and it's a great place to learn it as well. So if you're you know out there gigging, just keep on doing it. Judo asks, Hey Scott, do you have any tips for young musicians? How do you add extra notes in simple chords such as minor chords and major chords instead of driving playing around with the 5th, 3rd, root, major, 2nd and 13th? How do you freely improvise without messing up? So that is a big question and I know that you're 13. I read your, uh, I read your, your, um, your question on YouTube so awesome that you're in it you know 13 years old you're gonna be burning in a few years you're gonna be red hot so what i'd say is I, I try and be really systematic about the way i approach playing bass lines it's not what it, and i don't really think about it when i'm doing it now but the way i learned how to do it and the way i teach it is in a really systematic way just like roots first then roots and fifths like you're talking about then roots thirds and fifths then the full chord root third fifth and seventh by the way if anybody hasn't checked it out i've got a whole guide 30 minute lesson on baseline creation over at scottsbasslessons.com it's in the toolkit area go over there sign up 30 minutes it comes with a full worksheet tab notation play alongs totally free go over to scottsbasslessons.com sign up you'll get access to that so i've got a really systematic way of doing that and then again when you said about the ninths and the thirteenths and what you're talking about there specifically is, like if it's a major chord, you know, using them 13s, using the 9s. You know, um, and that just plugs into that system, you know, roots, fifths, thirds, or roots, third, fifths, sevenths, extensions. And then how do I play so freely without getting lost and losing my place? That's really key and comes down to fingerboard visualization. So that is to do with fingerboard visualization, actually, and vocabulary. So vocabulary, what is vocabulary? It's just, it's just like if somebody comes to the door and knocks on the door and you open it, and it's your friend, you say, hey Steve, how you doing? Or something along those lines. You don't think to yourself, oh, how do I say hello to this guy? Hey, uh, Steve, how are you? You know what I mean? That doesn't happen. You've just done it so, so often. And that's exactly what happens on bass. You just have these common phrases that you learn, just like common phrases when you're speaking. So if I'm playing over a C major chord like that, You know, going up to the major third, that's just common bass vocabulary. You know, it's just common bass vocabulary. So I've got that. And how do you learn vocabulary? Like by transcribing a zillion bass lines and, and taking what you're learning, analyzing it in a sense of what are they doing? Roots, thirds, are they, how is that plug into that system? Find out what they're doing and then just use it in your own playing and practicing it over and over and over again. That's how you build vocabulary. And then the visualization point of it or, or side of it is how I... Um, for instance, no, like all my arpeggios, like a C major starting on E. You know, I've learned to visualize the arpeggios over the fingerboard and I've really, really worked hard on that. Like I'm talking years and years of practicing arpeggios in different inversions up and down the neck through loads of jazz standards and things like that, just to get that down. And it, that's kind of, that's the key to it for me is that fingerboard visualization. And that's something I learned from Gary Willis, who was just like super hot on that. And he was just like, you need to be able to visualize all of these geometric patterns and shapes um, for major arpeggios, minor arpeggios, diminished arpeggios. You need to be able to visualize them over the fingerboard. And then if somebody plays, says, hey, let's play in C, you don't think, oh, Here's the C. You think, oh, right, okay, well, I've got all of these, you know, options all over the fingerboard. It's completely wide open. So hopefully that answered your question. And if you haven't checked it out yet, get over and download the, uh, well, not download, get access to the uh, baseline creation guide as well. 
um, which is over at scottspaceessence.com. All you need to go over is go over and subscribe and you'll get sent a specific link to that video. Cheers, man. Okay, guys, that's it for this week. Remember, leave your comments below. Um, and just like we did last week, I want to ask you a question. I want a question of the day. So the question of today is, what's your, who's your favourite bass player like right now? Who is your favourite bass player? Last week we did who, what band do you listen to? I want to know, who is your favourite bass player right now? Who do you sort of like, who, you, who, you, who you're listening to and thinking, man, that is how I want to play? Let me know in the comments below. Other than that, take it easy and get in the shed. Bye.